By the end of this video, you know exactly how to incorporate niacinamide into your routine and get the best results. The big question that I've heard a lot is, what percentage niacinamide should be used? Hey everyone, today's video is all about niacinamide. It's something that's been around for a really long time, and for me, it's one of those really slow and steady, reliable skincare ingredients. You won't see a big improvement straight away, but in the long term, you see really good results. As always, I'm gonna show you guys some trials or the clinical research, and we'll talk about the benefits. This video also has a mini review of two very popular niacinamide products. These are just two products that I've been using, and I wanna give you my true opinion on which one to use. This video is entirely non-sponsored. If you want to see more reviews, check out my Instagram at Dr. Sapna Skin. So let's get started. So what is niacinamide and how does it work? So niacinamide is also known as vitamin B3. It has loads of other names, niacin, nicotinic acid, and these are just the different compounds that come from the same core molecular structure. Now niacinamide is involved in making two coenzymes, NAD plus and NADH. These enzymes are used in lots of different processes that are going on in our skin. They're used for cell turnover, growth, that sort of thing to make sure that your skin is healing and working as it should. Now there are loads of different properties that products claim to have when they've got niacinamide in it. But I'm gonna go through one at a time and see if there's any clinical research that actually back this up. I'm gonna talk about the barrier protection properties. Now, this study actually took niacinamide and skin cells and incubated them in a lab to see what would happen. And in this study, they noticed that the actual skin cells started producing more ceramides and free fatty acids. Now, these are the fats and lipids that actually help keep your skin barrier functioning. They act as the cement between the skin cells that keep it being waterproof and stop any water leaking out. That process is all called transepidermal water loss. And they kept noticing that the niacinamide skin cells were producing more of these ceramides and reducing their transepidermal water loss. Now, you might have heard that whole term when it, we talk about the barrier function of our skin because as well as keeping water in, it helps keep sort of irritants out. If you've ever had a broken skin barrier, you'll know what that means. It basically means your skin is really, really irritated and it's gonna get more sort of infections, more acne, more irritation, the red inflamed skin that we really don't wanna have. There have been loads of studies that supported the fact that niacinamide can help prevent that, all by increasing the production of the ceramides and free fatty acids. As well as the lab studies, that claim has been supported by lots of clinical trials on real people as well. Now, lots Lots of niacinamide products claim to help with hyperpigmentation. But let's talk about a study that proves if that works. So this was a study conducted in India where they had Indian women above the age of 30 and below the age of 60 who suffered with hyperpigmentation. They took 207 women, which is huge. 99 of them were randomized to the test product and 108 of them were randomized to the control product without the niacinamide. Now those 99 women were instructed to use a niacinamide moisturizer with 4% niacinamide in it. They had a completely controlled skincare routine outside of that so that you could definitely compare the results with them and the control group and make sure that all of the improvements were coming from the niacinamide. 84% of women noticed an improvement in their hyperpigmentation, including acne scar as well as the sort of pigmentation you get after the sun, things like melasma. They didn't see that it kind of went away straight away, but they definitely noticed that after 12 weeks, there was an improvement in that. They also noticed that their skin felt smoother. And that's because there is some discussion in these clinical papers that niacinamide has a very, very mild exfoliating effect a bit like your AHAs and BHAs, but just much more mild that can help with that smooth appearance. And there are quite a lot of studies that actually prove these similar types of results. This particular study had 50 women who had Caucasian skin over a 12 week period using a 5% niacinamide serum. And very similarly, they noticed improvements in the texture of their skin and pigmentation. They were actually finding that because of the hydrating effects of improving your ceramide and your free fatty acid production, that their skin appeared like there was less fine lines and wrinkles. Now, this doesn't target fine lines and wrinkles as aggressively as a vitamin A product, but it definitely has this added sort of side effect that you only really notice if you're using it for a really long time. Now, I really recommend niacinamide to anyone with acne prone skin. I noticed that lots of people with acne really attack their skin trying to exfoliate and over exfoliate to get rid of your blocked pores and things like that. And trust me, I've been through all of the same things. But actually I noticed a much more gentle approach really works. And I think niacinamide can play into that really well. It's really useful for calming down your inflammation from any active acne. When you are overusing those other actives, you start to get that redness with those tiny little whiteheads, the ones that look like they're really, really superficial and that you're really, really tempted to pop. 
and those are usually happening because your skin is over irritated and niacinamide is a good way to try and calm that down without continuing the irritation and it's all part of that free fatty acid and ceramide production those ingredients those molecules really help your skin stop losing water and really calm down that inflammation because it's building a nice strong barrier to all the irritants outside now it doesn't target your sort of acne and your pores directly but by reducing this inflammation you'll really start to calm down your breakouts and make sure that you're not getting breakouts just from irritation alone there are also some papers that say the niacinamide was helping balance their oil production for acne prone skin so absolutely you can use it if you want it to just control that oil production a little bit to help with your acne who needs niacinamide now like i mentioned before i think that there is a big role for niacinamide in anyone with acne but i think it can be used for anyone if you have any issues with pigmentation which most people do have a little bit somewhere or any issues with just a bit of skin texture or just trying to improve sort of fine lines and wrinkles in the future without being too aggressive niacinamide is definitely an option if you do have much more aggressive pigmentation it might not be enough for you you might want to go down a much more sort of intense route maybe looking at retinoids maybe looking at hydroquinone but this might just be a good place to start now I actually recommend niacinamide over vitamin C and if you love vitamin C don't like don't come at me but I think it's just really well tolerated compared to vitamin C now I know vitamin C's tend to be really expensive and it's really hard to find the right one for your skin where there's niacinamides tend to be much gentler and it's just easier to fit into your skincare routine you don't have to worry about it oxidizing or becoming unstable as easily as vitamin C does now how do you use niacinamide in your skincare routine now typically niacinamide comes in a serum formula and that's the same with the ones I have here today. They're both serums. You can use them straight after cleansing. So it works pretty well onto clean skin. Now generally niacinamide is is fine just to use once a day. I don't think you need to use it any more than that. I think if you're using it less than that and only once a week or twice a week, you won't really see the benefits because it is a product that takes a long time to work. And if you're only using it sort of here and there, you might not notice the improvements. One of the questions I had was whether or not you can use niacinamide with vitamin C. Generally, the short answer is yes, you can use them together. There was lots of outdated research that said that they don't mix well together and some people still worried about that. <laughs> Generally, I don't think there are any issues about one being more ineffective when it's used with the other. I think if you are worried, just separate them. Use your vitamin C in the daytime and use your niacinamide at night. It doesn't really make too much difference. The only thing I'd say is that I prefer to just keep things a bit more simple. I'm not the biggest vitamin C fan or advocate. Now, I'm gonna answer the question that lots of people have been messaging and lots of people have told me before. What percentage niacinamide should I use? Now, there are niacinamide serums available all the way from 2% up to 20%. All of the scientific clinical research has been conducted on serums between 2% and 5%. Now, that means that when it comes to percentages above 5%, we actually don't know if they have increased benefits or if it's just speculated that a higher percentage means improved results. All I'd say, what is definitely documented, that higher percentages have the potential to cause more irritation or problems if you have irritated, red, acne-prone skin. My general recommendation for that is if you have redness or sensitivity, just opt for a lower percentage and you don't need to be paying lots and lots more for a higher percentage. Now I'm finally gonna move on to the mini reviews for these two products. I have the Naturium 12% Niacinamide with 2% Zinc and I have the 20% Paula's Choice Niacinamide Serum. I'll start with the Naturium one. Now, this is a brand that I've only just started kind of getting into and I started with this product. I actually got through two of them already. It became a bit of a staple in my day-to-day -day routine and that's because it is just such an easy, like light serum that goes with everything. It has no issues with any acids, no issues with any retinoids or vitamin A that I use. It just kind of worked every day and I kind of loved it. I'll show you, I have literally, I don't even know if I have any left. Oh yeah, there's a tiny little bit there. You can see it's like a little gel and it's not too sticky or anything like that. And it just really blends in really, really easily. That's why I really liked it. It is a little bit hydrating as well. And what I felt like is that it's not leaving my skin like sticky or anything like that. It's just blends in nice and and easily really it is a like a thick gel it's not like a watery serum like compared to some hyaluronic acids and things like that that i've shown you before 
but it is still just a very easy niacinamide serum. Now, I noticed that lots of niacinamides can get like a bit weird and sticky and a bit crumbly, and that's how I felt about like, the ordinary one, but this doesn't do that at all. Now, if I had to pick between the ordinary and this, I would definitely splurge a little bit for this. This is 18 pounds. You can probably get it cheaper because it's at Space NK, and you can often find some voucher codes and things like that for Space NK, so you can probably get it cheaper. But 18 pounds is not too bad, for a serum. Wait till you hear about the other one. Oh my God, I can see that the weather's so rubbish outside. I wonder if you can see the rainbow coming through. Uh, I'll show you maybe a bit later. It's like blue skies on that side. Now, what's nice about this serum, it does have an extra 2% zinc in it. The zinc acts as a bit of an anti-inflammatory for your sort of active pimples. I haven't done the research into all the clinical papers that support the use of zinc. I do know that people have good results using zinc for acne. What I just wanted to add here is that the Naturium make a gel moisturizer that's 5% niacinamide. Like I said earlier, all of the clinical data uses percentages between 2% and 5%. And actually, you'll probably still get some of the benefits. What I like about this is that it will just be a bit of a simplified skincare routine so you don't necessarily feel like you need an extra serum and you can use that with all of your other skincare as well or on its own so I'm definitely keen to try that out next now the next product I'm gonna talk about is the 20% Paula's Choice now this product this is expensive. This is 50 pounds. You get 20 mils in that. The other one, you get 30 mils. This is 20 mils for 50 pounds. Like, oh God, it's a lot. And like, I get it. 50 pounds is a lot for a skincare serum that is, you could argue is non-essential. Like niacinamide is one of those things that I would think is essential, but I know that people who want to be more cost effective would prefer to use just a vitamin A or something like that, that is gonna target a few more things and be a bit more aggressive. I don't really think that way. I think that you're better off spending your money on a few staples like this. This is expensive. There's no doubt about it. So I'll show you. It's like a slightly orangey, almost brown serum. I'll put a couple of dots. Um, yeah, it's a bit more watery than the other one. But what's weird about it is like it has this weird kind of almost greasy kind of fatty feel to it. Like it does, it spreads through your skin quite easily. But I did feel that it just left a very slight, like, greasy film to your skin. Now, I know some people like it because it looks a bit more dewy than the other one. But for me, I just felt like it was a bit heavy and greasy on my skin. I already have very oily skin, so I didn't think that this was necessarily the best for that. Now, I'll talk about this 20% business. They released this 20% a few years ago, and before that, they have a 10% niacinamide serum. It looks a bit like this, but in a green and white bottle. Now, I don't know why they felt the need to go above and beyond the 10% and try and create this 20%. Almost everyone I've spoken to has felt like this is okay and this is good, but it didn't really do anything extra than the 10% serum as it was. That serum is 46 pounds and this one is 50, so it's not a big jump. However, I think the consistency of that one was better. This has still got that weird thick kind of oily feel to it. And I think that one just sunk into your skin much more easily. I probably would prefer to just repurchase that one, even though supposedly I'm getting an extra 10% of niacinamide. It doesn't quite work that way because there's only so much that we know is effective on your skin and there's no guarantee that extra 10% is doing anything. I do know that there are reviews of this product where people have found that it irritates their skin. I didn't have that problem, but my skin is pretty strong like I don't get irritated that easily so I didn't have a problem with this but I really think that I would probably just recommend going for a 10% serum anyway I really don't think you need this 20% if you have spurge and got it I didn't don't think it's a bad serum I don't think it causes me any troubles I still felt like it was giving me some of the improvements I get with niacinamide which is helping to target that pigmentation so I still would finish the bottle I still use it I just wouldn't repurchase this one there are lots of niacinamide serums out there the Inky List have a little bottle that's pretty good. It looks very similar to the Naturium one. The Ordinary have a niacinamide with zinc in it. I don't love that one because I always found that it was quite gloopy and sticky, so I just didn't like using it very much, but I think it's no more than five or six pounds. So if you're really on a budget, I'd go that way. But I really think that the Naturium one is a really good like mid-range product. This is the one that was 18 pounds, so I would recommend it to lots of people. 
In summary, there is lots of evidence to support the use of niacinamide. There are proven benefits such as reducing your transepidermal water loss by helping you produce free fatty acids and ceramides for your skin, as well as helping target pigmentation and generally the texture of your skin. I really would suggest that you don't need anything above 10%. I wouldn't go and splurge for a 20% serum like that. I think you can stick to the simple ones. Hopefully that was helpful. Definitely leave me a comment if you've used any of these or if you wanna talk about a different skincare ingredient. And that's it, see you next time.